I'm joined now by Yami Danier, a senior associate with the World Resource Institute's International Climate Action Initiative. Yami, welcome to the program. Thank you. So we heard Sean Willie talk about the casualties of climate change on this small island in Louisiana, but clearly that is not the only casualty of uh, climate change. Talk to us about how rising seas coastal erosion could really affect so many places around the world and where is the biggest risk in your opinion? Well, um, the Louisiana case is definitely not the only one. You can see this in Kiribati in the Pacific Islands. You already have Kiribati buying some lands uh, from the government of Fiji uh, to already plan for the, from the, for the relocation of uh, the people. Uh, you also have in Alaska the community that is uh, affected by the a warming permafrost. They also are planning their relocation and trying to seek uh, funding uh, for the move. Um, you know, we, are, we just had uh, the climate change conference uh, a couple of, well, a few days in mm -hmm. Bonn a few days ago. And, and there, there was a launch of an insurance uh, initiative and a global partnership that also aims at trying to, to provide communities with some means to insure themselves, you know, to cope, to anticipate and deal with those loss and damages. But yeah, I mean, but, who would pay for that? I mean, I think the big question is the funding here. This is a very sensitive issue because when you, call, you talk about compensation, this is really very sensitive. Uh, but I think there's, we need to think about solidarity and there's, uh, uh, now there's a coalition of the G7 but also the G20 around this insurance um, uh, initiative to try to really uh, come together and help uh, uh, mobilize funding to help the most vulnerable communities. We also see a lot of regional communities organizing themselves. So you do see uh, such uh, insurance mechanisms uh, set up in the Caribbean, in Africa, in Asia Pacific. Again, insurance is just one means to help countries to anticipate and deal with the risk, but not the only one. You have also effects on agriculture and the, the way con countries and populations have to shift even sure. their production. So it's a bigger issue. So what would you say was your biggest takeaway from COP23 in Bonn? Oh, there's many. First of all, this COP was the first ever presided by a small island. So it gives a sense of how, you know, the issue vulnerable of they are vulnerable and, and, and it was supposed to be a COP for the people and for the vulnerable countries. And I think they did that job. Uh, you know, there was the first ever platform on indigenous, uh, uh, indigenous people. There was also a program for, for gender. But I think there's two particular issues uh, that needs to be looked at because the next COP in COP24 in Poland is supposed to deliver, um, you know, what countries agreed back in Paris. First of all, Paris established what we need to do in order to maintain uh, the world under 1.5 or 2 degrees sure. Celsius. But we don't know yet how. We need to agree how and make this how as equitable as possible mm -hmm. for everybody. And this is the set of rules to, to engage everybody on the same boat uh, is yet to be defined. And we needed to see some incremental steps, uh, progress there, and we did. And also next year, there's supposed to be a dialogue with um, resulting in ministers looking themselves into the eyes, saying, yes, we're going to do better. By 2020, we're going to come back with a collective package of enhanced actions. And I think we did deliver a process that is supposed to be more solution driven than what we've seen before. All right, we'll have to leave it there, Yamid. Daniel, thank you so much. You're welcome.